Hi everyone, welcome back to another edition of the Tara Weekly Top Tips. This week sees us in a special three-part edition of again, sh making sure our colleagues got the correct jobs and availability in Tara. Again, the whole idea of this is to um, help the auth schedule do the best schedule it can with the information we give it. All the details you need is on how do I, which is on my right hand side. The idea of this video is to help support you do it. So we're going to click on our colleague, click on availability, and I click on add part done. When the window does pop up, we've got our favorite Tom Jones. So Tom's uh, in the part of name, I'm going to put the employee number. Now we're going to put the part of start date, we're going to put this from this Sunday. You won't see this pop up because it's on a window myself. And unfortunately, I won't let me drag it into this window. So it's going to play from this Sunday. Now, I'm going to leave this forever. Um, you can put an end date to any kind of add uh, availability part in the the system. Um, an example of this could be you've got a colleague that's got some childcare um, challenges for the next six weeks, could be during school holidays. So you're just going to change the it does a temporary availability that you agreed with a colleague, so you can just change it to the end date. Um, and then when the school hall is finished, it goes back to normal. Uh, with this colleague, we're just going to use a really simple example to bring in life, we're going to use forever. So that means it uh, stays as the availability pattern. We've got the option as well, uh, the current event, we could do a two week, three week, four week, you name it. Um, the example I always use for two weeks. Again, um, we can use the childcare example. Um, we've got a colleague that has um, childcare arrangements. It could be that one in two Saturdays they get childcare, um, and then the other Saturday available to work. This just really helps support you um, to create a schedule where you don't have to remember everything. The auto schedule actually do it for you, so it's a really good way of using it. Just an example, we're going to use one week, and we're going to use Sunday. If you double click on Sunday. Now, everything comes up as an available standard. Um, so what we're gonna do now is that we know Tom's availability is from six in the morning till 11 at night. So what we do, we put Tom down, six to 11, click available. What we do know about Tom as well, that even though he's available to work all day on a Sunday, he does have commitments on a Sunday morning where if he can, he'd like to go to these commitments. So what we can do is go from six in the morning to three in the afternoon. And we can put down uh, that he's available, we'll keep it as that. But actually from three o'clock onwards, we want him to be preferred. What this will mean is that the schedule actually um, put him down as preferred shift if we, if we can. Obviously, if there's an option where there's colleagues on sick or we need cover, as Tom is available down here, the off schedule will put them in for that if needs be, but always try to put his preferred in. Press OK. Let's use Monday as an example. So what we're going to do now is put preferred time off. So we know that Tom has got uh, some commitments on a Monday night. So it's his preferred time off. So we're going to put from 6 to 11 for time off. Then we're going to put down six in the morning till half past five. He's available. And then what we're going to do is put down his preferred on a Monday would be from 10 till four as preferred. And that's all we're doing is we're feeding the auto schedule with as much information as it can. Because ultimately what it does, it makes our life easier when the schedule runs overnight on the Tuesday. And when the rotor is there for us to be able to edit on the Wednesday, we need to do less work to it because the auto schedule's got all the information that we need. Thank you very much for tuning in.